I had somebody ask me about creases, and they said they really didn't quite fully grasp creases, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about it in regards to subdivision surfaces. So I'm going to create a simple circle. We're going to leave it with its default number of edges, so 32 vertices or edges. Press the Tab key to go into Edit Mode. Press the F key to fill it. I key, Inset, just a little ways, like that. And then the E key, we're going to extrude that down. In fact, let's come over and extrude down E these edges, Z, like that. So we're just creating this pretty basic shape. Let's come over now to this edge, and we're going to use the bevel function. Create a bevel looking about like that. Okay. We can use this object as a subdivision surface object quite easily. In fact, I'm going to tab out. Let's turn on smooth shading. And I'll come back in and we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier to it. In fact, let's come in and increase this to a level of three. And I can see that I have this big polygon in the middle here. Press the X key and remove that. So we're just dealing with this. In fact, Let's come over and look at this in shaded mode. And we can see that the cage is creating the subdivided geometry in the gray, and that's what we want. But many times you're working towards something that maybe is more of a hard body type of thing. And you want to have a little bit more control. Let's say that we came in in edge mode, and I'm going to select this edge, hold the shift key and select this edge. We'll come up to edge and we can see edge crease. So I'm just going to begin moving the mouse left to right, and you just have to kind of follow the prompt. Sometimes you won't initially see anything, but now you can see that we're changing the nature of the subdivision, and we can create sort of somewhat more defined or sharper corners. In fact, let's do this. Let's press the tab key to leave edit mode, and you can see how I've changed that. Let's come in, press Shift A, and we're going to add a cube. It's going to be enormous, so I'll make that a six inch cube. We can apply a subdivision surface modifier to it. Let's put a pretty high subdivision level of four on there. Let's turn on auto smoothing and tab. Let's take these top edges, press Shift and E, and as I begin to slowly mouse, we'll begin to see that change. So you can use this as a way of changing the shape of a subdivision expression on an object. That's certainly a viable way of using it, but I'm going to tell you from a practical standpoint, the way that this tool is by far the most useful is controlling hard body modeling, where you want the subdivided polygons to go where you want them to go and where you don't want them to go. So for instance, let's take this all the way up in edge crease down here, and we can create a perfect edge crease. So we're essentially telling some of the subdivided polygons to stay within essentially the boundary of their original parent cage polygon. And let's look at this with even a little bit more detail. I'm going to delete that and we'll hide this. In fact, let me move that back out to the main scene. And I'm going to turn that off and we're going to press Shift A and we're going to add a plane. Let's make this pretty small too. Okay. Tab to come into edit mode. We're in edge. I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to make that pretty small. And on the opposite edge over here, I'll press E and we're going to extrude that out only along the x axis. And I'm going to make that quite long. So we've got a thin polygon subdividing into a longer polygon. Let's do something. Let's come over to this polygon. Let's come down to materials and we're going to create two assignments that we can apply a material to one assignment and another material to the second assignment. So uh, to the, the one that I currently have selected, we'll use this top entry. And I've already got two materials. We're going to call this blue, and then we're going to assign that. In fact, let's shift this over so we can see that assignment viewport shading. Now for this one here, down here, let's come over and assign this and change that to a red material. When we look at this, the materials are only applying to the polygons that we've applied them to. And that's what each of these slots are. But if we assign now a subdivision modifier, let's increase this to a level of three, we can see that the blue comes into the region that was just and assigned to 
just the red polygon. So if we look at this in wireframe view and we turn off optimal display, we can clearly see the distribution of the subdivided polygons. The subdivided polygons don't stay within the footprint of the original cage polygon. They blend into their neighbors. And we can especially see this if we take this edge, let's come over into edge mode, take this original cage edge and we pull that up, we can clearly see what's happening. What if we want to change the shape? So we could do this again. We could come back up to the edge crease. And you can see how I can change that just by mousing left to right. But what it's not doing is it's not actually creating any more geometry. So you would necessarily need to maybe increase the subdivision levels. If we take it all the way up to a value of one, we actually create a hard corner right there. Well, this may not necessarily seem useful here, but it really is when you're doing hard body modeling. And I could come over with the loop function, put a loop right there, and then I could pull that up or change it and create curvature there, but maintain that hard boundary at that point. That's why this crease function is really useful. But now we're going to take a look at its very most useful expression. Let's switch back over into viewport shading so we can see the color, the material assignment to each of the slots as they affect the polygons. So if we take everything right now, let's take all this geometry and we'll come over and we're just going to scale it down. We're going to flatten that down so it's back flat again. So if we come over and look at it in wireframe, the child polygons of this blue one are not allowed to pass that boundary when they're subdivided. And this is the key to understanding why this is useful for hard body modeling. I'm going to press tab key. We'll just delete that and we'll bring back our original circle geometry. So let's come over here now and consider this. If I press the tab key to come back into edit, we're going to leave optimal display so we can see the subdivision surface. So in fact, I actually think that here where we've increased the creasing, it isn't a super optimal way of creating a hard body in this particular case, because the density of distribution of polygons isn't very good right there. And you'd have to increase the subdivision level to say four to get more, but then you're increasing the amount of polygons across the entire surface, which isn't ideal. So what I'm going to do is press shift and E and I'm just going to mouse a little bit and then I'm going to take edge crease back to zero. You could do that. Or if I undo this, let's uh, leave edit mode. I could just come down here to data object properties. And where it says geometry data, you could come down and do a clear edge crease and that would remove that also. So what I want to do is add a few extra edges to control the geometry. We'll come over put an edge loop here and we'll put an edge loop here. So that's a better way of controlling the subdivision. And we'll do it over here too. We'll put one right there and we'll put one right there. Let's say that we want to use our, our edge creasing on these edges, these three edges as I've selected them. In fact, let's, let's just turn off subdivision temporarily. So we can also see that we've got one right here. So I'll hold the shift key and add that to the selection. Let's turn that back on. Now, when we do our edge crease and I start mousing left to right, you just kind of move until you see, or you can just click and then come down here. Cause sometimes depending on your object, it'll have a hard time figuring out your mouse movement. So just grab this and now look what happens. So we're making it so that the child polygons here and here aren't passing that boundary and it concentrates those polygons right where you want them to be in the area that's curving not in the flat area so this these are all planar to each other so we don't want those subdivided polygons moving over here and pulling some of that curvature into the flat area okay so let's do this let's let's come down here let's add some modeling to this i'll add take those two polygons will come to the opposite side and we'll select those bring up the context menu and we'll do bridge faces so now we've really changed the subdivision by bridging those it's not nearly as controlled as it needs to be so i'm going to come over to the loop cut we'll add one loop in the middle there there and there and then 
I'm going to double click those two new edges, press the S key. So let's look at this along the Y axis, S, Y, and we'll pull those in closer to about right there. Okay. So now we can come over and if, if I focus down on this area, I can press shift E, begin mousing. There we go. And I can begin to see that change of it pulling polygons in. And then sometimes you have to actually come down here and make sure it goes all the way to one. Now we've got that as a boundary. So the child polygons from this parent polygon here can't pass that boundary. And that just concentrates the curvature where you want it to be. So this is where we would also come in and we could look at this Let's, on the bottom. I'm going to remove the bottom polygons because we're just, we're not going to look at these. So let me just come over really quick and remove those X and then we'll delete those faces. So we're only really going to be concentrating on the top. Now on, on the top, this area here, if we look at this in shading, it's slightly curved. It, it's hard to see, but it is slightly curved. So this is where, again, we can use that function to our advantage. So let's come back over here. In fact, let's turn off subdivision temporarily press the K key, hold the shift key to add a point in the middle, I'm continuing to hold shift, right click to start a new entry, hold the shift key again, and we'll add those right there, hit return. Okay, so now we come over into edge mode and we double click on those, S key, and then along the X, I'm going to move those closer to that edge because it's this edge that I'd like to be rounded and this area be flat. Now we need to come in press the K key and add a termination there and a termination there. Right click and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Here to here and here to here. Okay. So now come back in to uh, turn the subdivision back on. We can see that it's it's now distributed the polygons in such a way that once again, we have this coming into here, but we do see a blending of the polygons, which means there is a slight amount of curvature coming in over here. So we would come back into our edge mode. Let's double click and now shift and E and let's pull those all the way over. And there we go. So now we have that middle area that we've created is much more controlled look at that. So this creasing function really gives you some control over hard body modeling. In fact, I think I could even come in and add one more loop right there to further constrain that. There we go. And let's leave edit mode. And so this is how I approach doing hard body modeling. You get the benefits of subdivision surface, but you get it very tightly controlled. And we're going to look at one further aspect of this in the next segment. So let's alter this a little bit. I will come into the top into edit mode and I'm going to take this edge. In fact, let's do this. Let's turn off subdivision and we're going to dissolve that edge. And so it leaves that kind of bevel in its place. Let's turn on subdivision again and let's leave edit mode. But now it looks kind of wonky because we get kind of shading right here. It's constrained the subdivision. So when we turn back wireframe, we can clearly see that we have flat polygons and that hard edge crease has concentrated the polygons where we want them to be. But now we get kind of blending and shading right here. And we don't want that to be. So this is where we need to come back into edit mode and we need to add in addition to an edge crease and you need to come up and you need to add a mark sharp to those and that will break the shading at those regions. So if I leave edit mode, now you can see that we've broken the shading at those regions, which otherwise was governed here in the normal area where I have my auto smooth set to 40 degrees. So if the angle between two polygons was less than 40 degrees, then it would blend them together. 
And in Blender, edge creasing does not automatically break the shading. And it does in some 3D applications, but in Blender it doesn't. And I actually like that because it gives you some flexibility.